Now let's go over that tree collider issue one more time. Let's try and explain it in a little bit more detail. Okay, so I'm just going to hit play and hopefully I can reproduce the problem. There's our NPC. He's coming in towards the tree. No, he's missing. Let's try and line that up a little bit better. Let's find our player. Let's see the player in the world. Let's grab our NPC. From that perspective, let's try and bring him up to right behind the tree. We're going to forcefully reduce the problem. This is where working with handles is a lot of fun in 3D. Gotta try every angle, make sure he's right. Okay, let's try and reproduce that problem. Okay, so again, cross referencing our player. Try and get those two trees right in his way. Okay, I'm pretty happy about that. So, again, let's zoom in on the collider. The collider is penetrating. Alright, now first to recap. All the way back in the terrain videos, we showed how to add tree colliders on these tree prefabs without colliders. Yeah, let's just save that scene. Go to a new scene, drag in one of our trees that we created with a collider. And I'm going to change my view, aren't I? Okay, so we created a tree collider. Now, let's open the other scene again. Fix it to rain. Go back to our NPC. Now, we see our trees are part of the terrain. Okay? There's our trees and there's our terrain all happening. Now, go back to our terrain. Create tree colliders, yes. So when this tree is introduced as a part of the terrain, this tree collider will actually be named Terrain. So when we go to our NPC movement, when he's moving, we do a ray cast from his left shoulder and right shoulder. We say if it is not equal to terrain, start steering around. So his raycast is going to hit that tree, and it's going to return to rain. Okay? Now I could just leave that and say, oh well, let's leave it. It's just one of those bugs that exist. Let's just wait till he teleports. But no, this could be a game stopper. So I'm just going to show you again on the fly how we can work around something like this. So what do we have to work with? We have the movement of the player. Uh, movement of the NPC. That is the velocity. Now what we can do is we can check our velocity and when it's hitting a tree he's not moving. So his velocity is going to be set to zero or at least the magnitude is going to be quite low. So how can we look at that? So again we're checking moving Okay, before we set the rotation, let's put a debug in here and start working it out. Debug log. And what do we want to know? We want to know my rigid body dot velocity. Okay, let's ask for some more information too. Plus, um, let's just so we know what we're checking here. Velocity equals plus. Okay, so we're going to debug our velocity and our rigid body velocity, and then we're going to debug our velocity magnitude. So we're going to get two outputs. We're going to get our vector three velocity, and we're going to get our magnitude. 
velocity is a vector 3. Like I said, square magnitude is a lot faster, but this is only one debug. This is for us. So let's go with the magnitude. Alright. As I mentioned it, let's just output one more bit of information. Velocity magnitude squared. So just like that, we're going to get three bits of instant data. Our velocity, our magnitude, and our square magnitude. Now let's see what happens to those magnitudes when we get a tree. I didn't actually check if I've been able to reproduce the problem yet, did I? Let's hit play. I turned around too much. Alright, so what we can do, let's even set his rotation up so he's already looking in that direction. Okay, so we should set off and immediately walk towards that tree. And there we are, we have our velocities, all our debugs going on. Let's just bring it down to one line. Okay, so I'm going to hit play, see if I can reproduce the problem. And now his rigid body is kind of <laughs> nudging its way around anyway. Sideways a bit. Try to reproduce a bug and I can't. There we go, finally we've got something happening. Okay, so we've hit the tree collider. A tree collider is named terrain. So he's not going to adjust his rotation. Now what can we do about that? As you can see, it does still have velocity. It's very low velocity. Just pause that so it stops printing out all this stuff. See if I can tear off the console. Get all the information. So I can look at a wide range. Okay, so he was stopped for a long while there. Let's see if we can find where he was moving. Okay, so we start to see, he started off, he was definitely moving, he has velocity, and the magnitude of the velocity. Kind of drops up and down a bit, depending on the terrain. 60, 50s, okay, so we've got 50, 60, bang. Something's happened here. This must be where he first collided, and the rigid body is kind of given a bit of a bump. So after this point, let's have a look at things. It's pretty safe to say, in a stationary position, if we look at every square magnitude after that, I can't see any that are greater than 1.5. They're all 1.4 something. There we go, oh, there's a 1.5. Let's see if I can find anything greater than that. 1.5, 1.5, nope, nope. 1.52s. Okay, so I'm just going to jump halfway down, 1.51s, get to the end. Okay, so we could safely say that when we have impacted with a tree collider, our velocity square magnitude has dropped down to 1.5. So what can we do with that? Okay, so if we're in the function moving, he's definitely allowed to move. He's grounded. He doesn't have line of sight, he's not visible. So we're moving when we are allowed to move. So we can directly modify things here without upsetting the rest of our logic. So we have our rigid body velocity squared magnitude. And as I said, when it was stationary, it appeared that that value was less than we can say 1.6, I'll even say 1.75. I'm almost writing a conditional here. Then the NPC is stuck. It's not moving. What's going on here? So what can we do? Now, 
We've modified our look direction by our hit normal previously, which is another normalized vector 3. So let's try and cheat something like that in there. So let's write the proper conditional if. And as I said here, if the velocity magnitude, square magnitude, is less than 1.75, it will be safe to assume that we're kind of stuck against a tree collider that is named terrain. So what can we do? Before, we were modifying our look direction. We don't have the hit normal. Or do we? Now let's assume that that raycast returned null. So we didn't have a hit normal. So we're not going to work off that. So let's just work off the MPC game object itself. My transform, let's just tell it to steer right. So as before, we were incrementing our we're modifying our look directional vector by our hit normal by a certain amount. So this time we're just going to use our transform right. So let's see my computer's starting to lag. I have to restart. And I've lost my view. So let's see if we can reproduce that error again. I haven't moved the MPC. So, let's see if he hits the tree, and then he realizes that he stopped, and he actually steers himself to the right. Let's see if that's fixed it. Come up to the tree. There we go. See a bit of steering going on. He's trying to... There we go. It wasn't a showstopper. He did not completely stop there. He actually managed to fumble his way around. It wasn't the prettiest. It wasn't the most elegant. But at least it got the job done. And at the same time, he's only moving when he's not visible. You're never going to see that happening. But it hasn't stopped the game from continuing. He's still made his way around the tree. Alright, so that's enough there. I think that just goes to show, if you hit a problem, if you hit a wall, you know, just stop, try and look at it. Try and see what you can expose that works for you. And um, see what information you have to work with. And it should always be a solution. So we don't need that debug anymore, that's told us everything we need to know. So simply by adding a velocity square magnitude check, we can induce that. And then we don't have to rely on the teleporting, which is what we're going to do next.